your definition of a supercar might differ slightly from mine, but I suspect there's a few core ingredients that we can agree upon as being absolutely essential. Otherworldly looks are a must. Personally, I prefer it if the car is of Italian descent. And of course, it must be, absolutely must be, utterly impractical. Welcome to the Lancia Stratos. Reeling from significant financial losses throughout the 60s, Lancia were bought out by Fiat in 1969. Now at that time, Fiat already had a controlling interest in Ferrari, which was motivated almost entirely because of Ferrari's outstanding motorsport successes. Lancia did have a race department that was active with the Fulvia, but it wasn't committed to sport in the way that Ferrari were. Production of the first prototypes immediately began, each of them incorporating that list of recommendations gathered in the early stages. The curved windscreen isn't shaped just for the looks, it's shaped this way so that drivers could have uninterrupted views of their apexes, hence the kicked back A-pillars. In the end, this is what they came up with. The production Stratos was debuted at the 1971 Turin Motor Show and all of those individual elements were finally on display to the public for the first time. The short wheelbase and super wide track is deliberately designed to give the car an almost nervous handling balance, helping it to change directions on a dime. A mid-engine rear-wheel drive configuration was preferred to help give optimal weight distribution and aid with traction over the loose surfaces of the World Rally stages. Powered by a 2.4-litre V6 pulled out of Ferrari's Dino, the Stratos posed such a threat to Enzo that he actually held back on delivery of the engine units until Dino production had ceased altogether, at which point 500 motors landed at Lancia's factory gates. Nought to 60 miles an hour in 6.8 seconds and 144 miles per hour top speed. An all fiberglass body shrink wrapped around a space frame chassis but gave the car fantastic power to weight ratio. In the meantime, they worked hard to build the 500 production units required by the homologation rules so that for 1974, they could finally enter the production-based Group 4 category. The Stratos package was so ahead of its time that it rendered the competition of its production-based rivals obsolete almost instantaneously and went on to dominate the championship in 1974, 1975, and 1976. And even 10 years after it was first launched, the car was still claiming victories. I have no idea if you can even see me. The curvature of this windscreen was simply too aggressive for our cameraman to even mount his camera on from the inside. Purebred is the Lancia Stratos as a competition rally car, but even the door cards on the interior are shaped to accommodate a driver's crash helmet. Every iconic design cue that has made this car so recognizable has form at the very core of its styling. and recalcitrant, but let it off its lead. 
bass and you find a harmony where everything seems to synchronize and the Dino V6 2.4 litre engine just sings and what a song it is. of a yogi just to get yourself in and out. The driving position seems like the pedals are better suited for access from your passenger than from the driver's seat. I've forgotten that my head has to be cranked over at nearly 45 degrees just to see out of the windscreen and that the steering wheel slams hard into my right knee from one side whilst the gear lever slams hard into it from the other side. None of these things matter. Not one of them matter after just five minutes pushing this car through the hills of southern France. It's pure acceleration and I've wanted to drive one of these for so, so many years. Oh, it's really not disappointing. cars this thing feels pretty awful at low speed the Lancia Stratos is perhaps the ultimate example of form following function and what gorgeous form it has and boy oh boy does it function? We often talk about homologation specials being purebred but normally that's in reference to shoehorning an absurdly large engine into a tiny family saloon or changing body panels from steel to aluminium. Rarely, if ever, have we talked about a car that is entirely designed from scratch as a racer, as a rallier, as a competition car with the sole purpose of winning.